Hi everybody, welcome to this short video about this moisture meter, the Tramex uh, Concrete X5 Moisture Encounter. What we're going to do is we're going to be talking about the external features and the basic main menu setup for non-destructive testing. Okay, so we have our moisture meter here and um, we're just going to talk to you briefly about the external functions. Um, so first of all we have a keypad here with various buttons on it which I'll come back to. Um, we also have on the surface, a hum uh, on, the, on the top of it, a humidity probe and a connector for additional accessories which we're going to cover off in a separate video. So with that in mind we're just going to turn it over and we can now see the pin probe connections on the back. These are not actually pin probes in essence but they're, they're like little contact points. So these actually depress when they come into contact with the surface that you are testing. In some occasions these can actually stick down, that's because they've got a bit of dust inside there. Don't panic too much, all we need to do is just flick it with your fingernail or a sharp object such as a screwdriver um, or a pin and they'll eventually flick out. I actually keep these clean by using um, uh, a bit of tissue paper with a little bit of light oil on it, something like um, WD-40. So before you first use it, um, I always check the batteries. So I just use a screwdriver, flick open the battery cover, and in there we have the batteries. If you haven't used it for a long period of time, it's always worth checking the batteries, um, just to make sure that they haven't degraded and that they're still seated properly. Um, that one just clicked back in, as you probably just heard. So click that back in, turn it over, and I'm going to tell you this now, um, whenever you operate the machine, um, when you're pressing it against a surface, you can see these grip, foot, grip bars here where it's molded. Press and hold and put, press the meter down firmly um, to get the reading on the surface of the material that you're measuring. So that's how you use it uh, from that perspective. So switching on, well, we have an on button here. So we'll switch that on and we'll see the screen come on. Now, on here we have some information and I'm just going to run across the bottom first of all. This humidity probe here is displayed on the lower panel of the um, display screen and it has the temperature, relative humidity, DP which stands for uh, dew point temperature and then lastly HR or um, humidity. So this is expressed in grams per kilo on this particular meter. So when we look at these buttons um, there is a menu button pause button, a backlight button, um, we have up and down arrows for our menu selection and a selection key. Lastly on the bottom left hand corner there is a Bluetooth key to engage the Bluetooth so you can connect it to an app on your mobile phone. We're not going to cover this in this, in this video. So what we're going to do is we're going to go first of all into the main menu and cover non-destructive testing. So, press the menu button once and the menu button will come up and hopefully you'll be able to see a few selections there. The first time you use this, you just want to go arrow down to the temperature scale and press select and you will get an option to choose between centigrade and Fahrenheit. So typically in the UK um, and uh, Europe will use centigrade. Our colleagues over in the States, they will probably want to select Fahrenheit. So I'm just going to go ahead and select centigrade and it goes back to the uh, main menu. Now there are options here, um, but I'm going to just stick for the purpose of this video with NDT mode. And the NDT mode stands for non-destructive testing. So I'm going to select that for the time being. And we have now five options. So we have concrete percentage MC, CM concrete, CM anhydrite, gypsum and reference. So I'll just go to the top. Concrete percentage MC is moisture content in generic concrete. And it's based on gravimetric testing. And the equivalent reading that you will get will typically go up to a maximum of about 6.9%. The next one down, CM Concrete, is based on calcium, calcium carbide testing, also known as speedy testing. Um, so this is a, a separate scale uh, that you could use for comparison if you wish. 
Next one down is CM anhydrite. So for those anhydrite screeds that you come across, you have the opportunity to use this scale. Again, it's based on calcium carbide testing. Um, gypsum is more for the uh, US market where they require a different scale to do with uh, standards across there. Here in the UK, predominantly in the UK, in European mainland, um, we wouldn't use that scale generally. Uh, just lastly uh, on here is the reference scale and we'll come back to that scale a little later um, for what it can be used for. So we're just going to arrow back up and go to um, concrete percentage MC and press select and then we're going to press our main menu to go back to the main screen. And hopefully what you can see there is a 0.0% so now what's happening here is um, we can use this scale to measure uh, concrete um, by pressing the meter down onto the surface and holding it down. It's not registering here because it's on a uh, tabletop. But what we'll do is we'll actually demonstrate this shortly for you. So that is the different scales um, and how you would actually use the meter for measuring these surfaces. So here we have a concrete floor and we are just about to take the moisture content reading from this floor. So while I'm here I'm also just going to take off the dust cap um, so we can also get an atmospheric moisture reading uh, in this environment. So to start with we're just going to press the on button and we note from the surface that we are already in um, concrete MC mode and uh, the temperature is slowly dropping next one just taking the dust cap off um, but we'll just take the uh, concrete moisture content reading first so we place the concrete moisture meter on the surface um, and then we press down firmly and we're getting a reading of 4.4 so i'm just going to press the hold button um, or pause button and there you can now see that we are getting 4.4 on our screen so that's a typical and easy way to measure standard concrete um, in an environment where it's an old or aged concrete slab. If on the other hand it was a new concrete slab you could use exactly the same method but if it's a polished or finished concrete you may need to use a carver under stone um, to just abrade the surface slightly so you can come in direct contact uh, with the concrete. If however, and I'll just take that off hold for now, if however I wanted to take a, a separate um, reading from non-destructive reading as a CM or calcium carbide equivalent meter reading, um, I'm just doing this for comparison purposes, I would select the CM concrete mode, um, press the menu button, go back to the standard reading, uh, display screen sorry, and I'm going to place that on the floor press down firmly and you can see there that I'm now getting a moisture, re moisture content reading of 2.6 and that 2.6 reading is purely as a result of the different scale that the CM concrete is taking which is the calcium carbide test. So I'm going to take that off hold, go back to our main menu for standard concrete moisture readings, um, Whoops, we'll just go back into the NDT uh, for concrete press select, press our mode. So concrete MC is the standard moisture reading we would want to be using when we're measuring aged concrete slabs um, using the moisture concrete scale. Okay so we have a slightly different scenario here um, in measuring moisture on this concrete floor. Um, as you can see there is evidence of a black uh, bitumastic type adhesive on the surface of the concrete. Um, just from a safety perspective for those who are in the know, uh, this has been tested as it, for any, any ACMs and it's been confirmed that um, it is negative for any ACMs. So in terms of testing, um, what we would typically see people do is turn their moisture meter on and leave it on concrete mode and then attempt to take a reading. Um, unfortunately, um, 
the pins on the back of this machine need to come in direct contact with the concrete. So anything that's between it and the concrete needs to be removed. So ideally um, we should really be trying to remove some of that surface material to take a moisture reading or alternatively we can use a different scale. So just from a comparison perspective just to demonstrate I'm going to take a moisture reading using the um, concrete scale. So that's currently reading 4.6, but we have to remember it is through that bitumastic material. So we're going to take that off, pause, and then we're going to use a different scale. So this is a reference scale we are now going to um, use. So we've gone into the uh, main menu and we've gone into NDT, we're selecting that, and then we've gone to the five different menus options that we have there and we're going to scroll down and select the reference scale. So we've selected the reference scale and we are pressing the main menu uh, to go back to the display screen. So here we would use this reference scale and we would take a moisture reading from an unaffected part of the concrete slab um, that we can come in direct contact with or if not through the um, bitumastic material and then we would take our reading in the wet area and what we can see on this particular um, reading is it's currently reading about 68 now this is not a percentage it's not based on any particular scale it is literally just a reference scale so this would be the preferred method when we can't come in direct contact with the, the concrete floor that we're trying to measure I'm just going to take that off hold. And it would be a similar principle, which you can actually do the same through vinyl. So here we have, um, this is actually vinyl, it's not wood, and um, we're going to take a moisture reading through the concrete, uh, through the vinyl of the concrete beneath. Uh, again, we're just using the reference scale, and as you can see, it's reading about 62. Um, and I, I know from the incident that happened with this particular floor um, that the floor was evenly wet but because of the um, vinyl that's on the surface of the concrete we're actually seeing a slight reduction in the reading so it's what's called a false negative or in other words we're actually losing an element of the real reading that we're trying to come into contact with and that's a principle we need to consider when we're trying to measure through um, sort of bitumastic materials or any materials on the surface of concrete it can actually give us what is potentially a false reading and potentially make it look drier than it actually is. So I'm just going to take this off um, hold now and I'm going to go back to our concrete reading through the scale I'm going to go back up to concrete pressing concrete and then menu and back to our standard concrete reading. So finally, just for this video, um, we're going to talk about how to um, use the moisture meter, uh, the X5, on um, different uh, solid surfaces. So for non-destructive purposes, we can actually take um, moisture readings from things like brick, block and concrete. But it is only a reference scale. It is not a WME reading or a moisture content reading when it comes to this non-destructive test. But it just shows you the versatility of this machine. So first of all, I'm just going to go into the menu button. And I'm going to select NDT for non-destructive test. And I'm going to scroll down to the reference mode and press select. And then finally the menu button to go back to the display screen. So now hopefully you can see we are actually on the reference scale. So when it comes to um, st solid structural materials, so here we're looking at a uh, cement rendered um, uh, brick wall. And just above the skirt level, skirting board level, we're going to take a reading by holding the meter against the wall, pressing firmly, and then pressing the pause button and we can see here that we have a reference reading of 9.9. .9. Now from a water damage management perspective um, to ascertain the level of moisture in this wall we would take the same reading from an unaffected part of the wall and compare the two. The affected area if it's higher than the um, unaffected area 
there's necessity for us to investigate further using um, a more appropriate skill. But this is a quick way to use this machine in a non-destructive method to be able to ascertain where further investigation is required. Just one little tip for this, the pins on the back of this machine, when they come into contact with um, emulsion surfaces or paper, um, if you actually press and drag it across the surface, you can actually leave indentations or marks on the surface. On an, on a, an emulsion uh, wall like this one, they can be used uh, rubbed off just using a pencil eraser or um, a wet wipe um, or a damp cloth. Paper, obviously, if you damage the surface with these pins, um, then obviously it's, it's not <laughs> it's not be able to put it right without actually uh, re wallpaper in the wall. So just a little tip there. The one thing we haven't shown you on this particular video is how to measure moisture through um, ceramic tiles to a concrete floor underneath. So that will be the feature of another video um, which will be coming along shortly. So hopefully that's given you a brief introduction into how to use uh, the basic features for non-destructive testing with your um, Tramix uh, Concrete X5. In up and coming videos we'll be talking more about the um, humidity probe and a separate attachment uh, you can use to have a second probe on there. We're also going to talk about using um, pin probes, long probes for uh, measuring other materials such as wood, plasterboard and brick. Um, and then finally, um, at some point, probably the next video, uh, we're going to talk about um, how to measure moisture through ceramic tiles and the importance of surface temperature and evaporative cooling. So thank you for your attention. I look forward to seeing you on the next one.